Hey guys, Sean here. Welcome to the F1 Word and to the Roundup, a new series with a new shorter format where I'll, well, round up some of these stories from F1 over the last few days. And by new format, I mean it's just shorter and more to the point. And by new series, I mean I just dropped the word news from the title. Honestly, it's a revolution. Anyway, I'm just going to get on with it. First up, F1 is not ruling out a hydrogen-powered future, at least that's according to Ross Braun, but he warns it's unlikely to happen for a while. The sport has begun work on what route the next generation of power units will go down starting as it stands in 2025, but it is expected they will be similar to the current crop of V6 hybrids but with a more powerful MG UK and the MG UH being scrapped altogether due to its cost and complexity, as well as the fact that potential new manufacturers are not overly keen on it. Beyond that though, Ross Braun told the BBC that F1 could look at bringing in a hydrogen fuel cell saying that it could allow the sport to keep the noise and the emotion, gotta be a good thing, while still trying to tackle the environmental challenge. He also had his say on the possibility of F1 becoming all electric in the future saying, and I'm sure this will be music to the ears of some, he does not believe the future of F1 will be battery. Why? Well, according to Braun, the sport would need a six or seven ton battery to allow the cars to run a full race. And he added, quote, the nature of electric powered cars is now what Formula One wants, but who knows what the fans in 20 years want. We want fans to be proud of our sport. So things aren't set to change all that drastically in the immediate future, but beyond that, just about everything from zero carbon fuels to hydrogen seems to be on the table, but not electric. I'm going to be quite frank though, I do not believe an all-electric F1 is totally off the table because who knows, like Ross Braun said, what will happen in the future. You know, manufacturers may put the pressure on and demand electric if they are going to stick around and fans might push for custard-powered cars. I guess just about anything is possible. Moving on. On Thursday, F1 gave us a first look at how the cars built to the new 2022 regulations could look as it showed off a promotional car at Silverstone. The new rules, as I'm sure you know by now, are aimed at closing up the field and aimed at allowing closer racing on track. And next year, we'll see the return of a ground effect floor, simpler front wings, a new look rear wing, stunning new 18-inch wheels, wheel covers, and so much more. Plus, things including barge boards have been banned. Drivers gave their first thoughts on the car, with many of them heading down the let's hope it works as expected and we just want to be able to race route, which is pretty much what us fans want to see. Pierre Gasly though reckons it looks pretty exciting, Daniel Ricciardo doesn't think it looks rubbish, instead saying the rear looks old school and Max Verstappen says it's interesting. I love it when these drivers are put on the spot, we always get these amazing quotes, however I am with Carlos Sites on this one who said it looks good from the front wheels back, but I've got to say something is bugging me about the front, I don't know what it is, I don't know if it's the nose or the front wing, whatever, I'm just not sure on it. For the most part though, livery aside, it looks pretty cool, but this is just one interpretation of the rules, and now those crafty and canny designers and engineers have got their hands on it, we could see some very different interpretations to what F1 expects once they launch next year. 2014 anyone? Oh, those noses, my god. Alfa Romeo and Sauber Motorsport will continue to work together going forward as the two confirmed a multi-year deal to extend their partnership. The two parties have worked together since 2018 and whilst the agreement is long term, there will be yearly assessments on that partnership. Great news for Sauber this one and Frederick Vasseur believes that with the new regulations coming into force next season, the team can make a leap forward and is very excited about the future with Alfa Romeo, which isn't all that much of a surprise. It'd be quite the story if he'd come out and said, this is rubbish, I hate Alfa, but there you go. But whilst the deal again is great news for the group, there is something more to this that could potentially spice up the driver market just a little bit more. According to Vasseur, when negotiating the contract, the team ensured they got flexibility on future driver choices and are apparently now not obliged to sign a Ferrari junior to one of those seats going forward. That said though, Vasseur has not ruled out signing Ferrari juniors in the future, adding that the ties with Ferrari at the very least make it easy to discuss the Scuderia's pool of drivers, but again emphasise they do have free choice. A couple of weeks ago, Toto Wolff said that Mercedes would decide over the summer who would partner Lewis Hamilton next season, explaining they wanted to wait a few more races to gain more clarity. However, because the sun came out in the UK and the fact it's British Grand Prix week, some outlets claim the team would confirm this week that George Russell will be taking Valtteri Bottas' seat at the end of this season. However, Russell has dismissed that speculation in the F1 Nation podcast, insisting nothing has been decided or signed yet. Despite that though, Russell apparently remains the favourite to land a seat at Mercedes alongside Lewis Hamilton for 2022, which of course would see Valtteri Bottas leave after five seasons with the team. 
The big question is, will Russell get that seat? Well, it's looking increasingly likely, although Bottas did have a couple of good weekends in Austria. And you never know, if he keeps that up, he may well bring himself back into contention. If I'm honest, I doubt it. And if you want me to make a prediction, I fully expect Russell to be confirmed just before or just after the summer break. Let me know what you think below, though. Pierre Gasly looks set to stay with Alpha Tauri next season as it looks increasingly likely that Red Bull will keep hold of Sergio Perez and the fact the Frenchman is still, in his words, contracted for some more time. Gasly and Helmut Marko discussed his form and future over lunch in Austria. Very nice. And the chat left him feeling very positive about their future plans. Gasly added that they are pleased with his performances as they absolutely should be and is basically focused on keeping up his current level of form. Sebastian Vettel does not believe that the official record for pole position should go to the winner of sprint qualifying, describing the decision as wrong, saying instead that it should go to the driver who sets the fastest time over one lap. However, whilst he's not happy with how the records will be handled, Seb does think the new format will produce excitement due to the lack of practice ahead of qualifying. And by the time this video goes out, we will of course know if that is true or not. And finally, whilst we're on the subject of sprint qualifying, qualifying for qualifying took place on Friday. So let's have a look at how they will line up on the grid for tomorrow's sprint qualifying, which will determine the grid for the race proper on Sunday. Lewis Hamilton takes the first ever Pirelli Speed King Award. That does not count, by the way, as pole position 101. I'll let you make your own minds up on that one. Max Verstappen will start on the front row alongside him with Valtteri Bottas third, Charles Leclerc fourth and Sergio Perez in fifth. Lando Norris will start 6th tomorrow with Ricardo 7th and George Russell in 8th place. And then we've got Carlos Sainz and Sebastian Vettel rounding out the top 10 there, followed by Alonso and Gasly. And then it's Esteban Ocon, Antonio Giovinazzi, Lance Stroll in 15th, with Yuki Tsunoda 16th, Kimi Raikkonen 17th, Nicholas Latifi 18th, Schumacher 19th and Nikita Mazepin in 20th. That is your grid for sprint qualifying tomorrow and it's going to be really interesting to see how that all shakes out and what we all make of sprint quality when it's all over. That is it for this week's roundup then, but you can let me know your thoughts on any of the stories featured in the comments section down below and don't forget to leave a like if you did enjoy this video and subscribe to the channel if you're new so you don't miss out on any future uploads. Hopefully I'll catch you again in the race reaction on Sunday, but for now, thank you for watching. I've been Sean, this has been the F1 Word and until next time, goodbye.